of uh, pink slips and P45s. Uh, my erstwhile colleague, uh, Jackie, has uh, somehow disappeared from the screen, but she'll be with us just again in a second. But yeah. our very, very special guest this week is uh, Joanne Lockwood. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows Joanne. Hi, Joanne. How are you doing? Oh, really great to see you. Great to see you again. Hi, Jackie. You're back. Yeah, I'm what? good. <laughs> what happened there, Jackie? You just disappeared and then came back again. I, I Operator error. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens. So the, I, 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 can I just say to everyone, we're all support. The three of us are all, relatively speaking, pretty experienced with technology. But we tried to have a test run of the show yesterday, and uh, it was catastrophically bad. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> it was really bad. And, yeah, and we, we're using tech all the time. I, I, that said, that said, the, the only professional IT person amongst us is Joanne. Uh, Joanne, uh, first of all, welcome to the show. Uh, yeah. You, you, you haven't seen last week's show, but I no, should make it clear no, no. Uh, to you and to everyone else watching, this is not a show where we're going to train anyone how to recruit or how they should be recruiting or where they're getting it all wrong. No one's yeah. going to learn anything about recruitment from what we are doing here today. Uh, it's a bit of light relief. Uh, it's getting close to Christmas, so we've got some lights on in the background. And uh, and there, there's my notional uh, nod to Christmas. There's Sandy Claus. Uh, but uh, the idea of this show is really just to get to know each other a little bit more, uh, yeah. be a bit more friendly and, uh, uh, and, and a bit more approachable. Uh, so there are too many shows, well, too many. There are more than enough shows out there that will train people what to do, how to do it, and uh, and, and and how they, they, they can be uh, better tomorrow than they were today. Uh, you're not going to get any of that here. Uh, so, D D Jackie, how's your week gone? Well, you know, it's been kind of a crazy week around here in Texas. It's rained every single freaking day. But it shouldn't be raining in Texas. That is surely every not, that's not right. Uh, yeah. But other than that, it's been good. Went to a Christmas party, went out of town this past week. That was nice. Fantastic. Uh, uh, yeah, that, Joe, uh, uh, my son uh, failing every class. Do you know, between between you and I, I got a letter home from school on uh, on Tuesday about Zach, and it was not good reading at all. So we'll uh, he's in the dog. After the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kids. So, Joe, uh, where exactly, can you pinpoint yourself uh, in the world? Where exactly are you right now? What's your, what's your coordinates? Uh Sofa in my living room. Okay. Uh, is that in a town? In <laughs> Just somewhere? outside of Portsmouth, uh, about 10 miles north of Portsmouth. Um, actually living in an old brewery. Uh, this was, um, for those of you who are, are real ale drinkers, Gales Ales, HSB. Uh, so this, <laughs> I actually live in the brewery that's now been converted into flats and apartments. So, yeah, I live in, in the tower of the brewery in a place called Horndean, from Horndean. I like the sound of Gales Ales. <laughs> I like the sound of Gales Ales. Yeah, Gales Ale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been bought out by Fuller's now, but it's. Uh, I, I literally live in the tower of the old brewery. So you're in the tower. Yeah. Fantastic. Have you, yeah. have you got an escape rope going out the window? <laughs> uh, no, it's all pretty well double glazed here. I mean, we'd have to struggle to uh, to bash our way out. So let's hope it doesn't burn down. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so you're on the you're on the English English Riviera. English Riviera, right on the A3. Yes, we can look out and see cars floating past in the rain. Yeah, <laughs> I've been on that road. It's terrible. Yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely it's, it's, that that entire road is a death trap. Or well, it was for me anyway. It's, it's so. improved a lot. Uh, now they put the high tech tunnel in. It, it, the journey to London up the A3 is is a hell of a lot better than it used to be. Yeah. yeah. So Joe, enough of this uh, uh, chit -chat. tittle tattle. Uh, <laughs> chit chat. Uh, uh, you have been for people watching who have uh, who, who have not been paying attention, and I can't believe uh, or been under a rock. You have been speaking at virtually every event uh, on the planet this year. Now I'm sure that's not the case, but it certainly seems like it. Whereas this time last year, you were you could walk down the street without being recognised, but now everyone knows Joanne Lockwood. How's your year been? Um. A whirlwind, you know, I, people often say to me, what's going on? I go, I'm not sure. You know, I, I woke up one day, uh, I met Bill Borman and uh, and kind of Bill yeah. invited me to True. It's, I think it's where we met Stephen. I think it was True London. It, it was, it was. Place with the stuffed, place with the stuffed animals. Um, 
And it was a, yeah, you know, I got to be people in the recruiting space. It was absolutely amazing. So I look back and say, where do I want to be at the end of 2018? I thought, I have no idea this is where I'd end up. Yeah, I was looking for a... Jackie's brought up on screen a, a quick search on what do we find for, yeah. for Joanne Lockwood. When we set, did this search last year, would it have been as, as, as populated as this? Would you have come up at the top for everything? Um, I was pretty busy because about this time last year, I had a, an incident with um, a local printer who refused to print my business card because of I their, their faith. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, that, that was, that, there was a lot of that last year, so last October. So I would have appeared... Because uh, uh, I was in the Sunday Times, I was in the Daily Mail, and various other places. So, yes, yeah. you can see it. You can see it sort of uh, there. So that's so that would have come up this time last year. But that's pretty pretty much about it, really. Um, so how, how, how did that pretty, with the, the business cards palaver? Um, it, it kind of, for, from my point of view, it wasn't about trying to berate anybody. It wasn't trying to uh, attack anybody. It was purely just saying, look, this has happened to me. What do you yeah. think? I personally think it's not fair. I think I've been a kind of, um, I, I felt like the person who did this had his own beliefs for whatever reason, but I just yeah. felt it was discrimination. So what, what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to, this person has a life, has a family, has a career, has a business. Yeah. So I wasn't trying to destroy anybody. I just wanted to say, look, to me, I didn't like to be treated like this. Would you like to be treated like this? Discuss. Yeah. And that's kind of what I wanted you, to just put it out there. Really issue, as it were. Say again, sorry? You were raising the issue. Yeah, raising the issue. And that's all I really wanted to do was just raise the issue as a as something that I don't think anybody should, yeah. who's trans or any other minority character, should, should have to experience on a daily basis. No, well, uh, like, was it? Tell, will you tell me a little bit about that? I know, um, as a woman and a person of color, I've, I've dealt with discrimination before, mm -hmm. um, but not in this way. And it's amazing how people will just come out and say, oh, you know, I, I'm wondering how it went. Like you, I, I can't imagine you go in and say, hey, we print these business cards and they say no. I, like how, how did that go down? Um, well, I was going to one of these, you know, weekly breakfast meeting business networking events. Um, it's, it's a chain of them all over the country, I believe all over the world. You know, you turn up for breakfast at 6.30, you do a one minute pitch, uh, everyone goes around the room and then you pass referrals at the end. So this, mm. I went to one meeting and I, I stood up and said, I'm a guest. This is me. This is what I do. Um, I, I promote diversity and inclusion, transgender awareness, et cetera, et cetera. And then I was invited back a week later to be a substitute, to stand in for somebody else, did the same pitch. And one of the guys in the room there was a printer. And he said, I'm looking to print business cards like printers do. You know, that's what they tend to print at these networking meetings because obviously everyone's taken the, yeah. you know, he's nicking everyone's business cards out of the box. So he can, he can print, print, um, printed paper cards. Yeah, so I just filled in a referral slip like you do at these meetings and hand it over. Uh, and he said, oh, just drop me an email. Uh, I can I can deal with that. I thought, okay. As per our conversation, here's a here's a image of my business cards. Here's my, here's my PDF proof. Can you print these, please? Or, or send me a quote. Send me a quote, what's it? Then time mm. passed. I thought well, this is a bit funny. You know, normally one of these the rules of the networking is if someone gives you a referral, you're straight on it. You get back in there and let's, let's get the quote out. Uh, it got yeah. to it got to about the Thursday afternoon. I thought, well, I haven't heard anything here. Uh, and then suddenly, ping, email appeared uh, from the printers, uh, and it was along the lines of, uh, I, I paraphrase. I mean, the exact text is all in those articles, but along the lines of, due to my faith and beliefs. I can't print your cards because if I was to print your cards, I would further marginalize people of my faith. And we, I believe in a traditional or a traditional model of gender identity, not this contemporary model, yeah. uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. It's, 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 not, it's not you, it's your business. Um, mm. If you had a business, if you had a requirement to print other cards, I'd have no problem, but I can't promote what you promote. Uh, yeah. Which so is kind of, temporary. Is kind of it's like this is the first time like oh we didn't do this before you, you know it's contemporary this is not a, this is not yeah this is a contemporary model of, of of diversity which they don't purport they, they were i say I, I have no everyone's entitled to their beliefs everyone's everyone's entitled it was just the let me tell you why i'm going to not do this for you if it mm. if this person had just not emailed me decided that Sorry, I'm too busy. Uh, sent a quote that was ten times what it should have been. 
I was just <laughs> I just jogged on by and not bothered. In fact, I was at the point of thinking, well, if they haven't replied, I don't. I, yeah, I might as well go somewhere else. I'll go back to the person didn't last time. I, the, printing is a commodity thing. You know, you just go there. Give it, here's a quote that will do. Print them off. I'll have yeah. to tell them, please. So I was just a bit shocked. You know, I go through life as a as a trans person, and I, I suffer virtually no discrimination personally. I wear that others do, and I'm not trying to minimise the struggles of other people. I'm privileged. Yeah. I don't have any problems. And this was like a real random slap on the face. I just didn't expect it. Came out of nowhere. So this person, uh, they, they, yeah. they had something to say, and they, they wanted to say it. They wanted yeah. to say, you know, yeah. this is our explanation, which yeah. we think is perfectly reasonable. Yeah. Rather than just say. I don't want to print your cards, but it's, it's I don't want to print your cards, and this is because, and it's like it's the lecture that came with it. Yeah, and it, it is. is. You know, you, I, I don't because you're because you're you're representing trans people is what you said right, as yeah. a trans person. Just uh, as, you, as you said that, a question occurred to me: if a, if a business didn't want, if a company didn't want your business, would it be discriminatory? I think it would be, but would it be discriminatory for them to just jack up the price? to put you off in the same way that insurance companies, when they don't want to insure young people driving cars, they just you know put the price to a ridiculous number so that uh, it, it sends people away. Um, I think commercially, you, you do business with people you want to do business with. I mean, we talk about yeah. employer branding. I know we're not getting into education here. Let's take it something else. Let's, let's talk about Greenpeace. Greenpeace yeah. aren't going to do business with a company that pollutes the earth. That's perfectly reasonable as a, as, a, as a customer. You don't want to buy from somebody. And as a mm. supplier, if you're trying to supply somebody who doesn't meet your environmental standards, whatever standards it is, you just say, yeah. I, de I decline. Yeah. Um, I think, but you don't decline with a lecture or with a, I'm not going to do business with you because it's just, actually, I'm out. I don't want to do business. That's, that's all we're too yeah. busy. There's a whole lot of ways you can say no without the lecture. And that, that's my point, really. It was the, the fact they felt the need to tell me why my business wasn't valuable to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, Jackie, did you do any more homework on, uh, on on Joe's background? What have we uncovered? I wanted to ask another question. Oh, go on. So, tell me, Joanne, is it true yeah. that blondes have more fun? And I'll tell you. <laughs> do blondes have more fun? Um, God, yes. Look at this. She went through a very. I was, I was very blonde, yeah. She went through a blonde phase, I and did. what's funny is I love it, and that's where I saw the uh, yellow scarf that I was telling you about. Mm. But look. So yeah, I no, that's, that's me. I'm I'm quite blonde, and I really love the picture top top row, first one, uh, second one in. So the the X yeah. one, yeah, that one there. That that's. Yeah. That was taken in a hallway outside my previous apartment, and it was just we're just messing around. And there's actually two other people either side of me. I cropped out, uh, but I, <laughs> I love that picture. But did blondes have more fun? Um, it was me at the time, and I love the black and white one on the top row as well. That was me at a nightclub. Um, so yeah, no, I love that look. But in order to take myself forward, I, I I now have a hair weave, which is not uncommon. People have them. Yeah. And I decided that it was it was easier to have a hair weave that matched my natural hair colour rather than having to maintain my net my, my hair underneath and this. So yeah. it was kind of a, it was kind of a practical a practical thing to go brunette. And I and I actually wanted to try it a bit longer and just try different styles and just and just play with it. So do blondes have more fun? Um yeah, I think I think I got different looks. I got uh yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the look. But I like this yeah. look as well. I like this look. I'm, I'm quite happy with this look. Yeah. Can you tell when you went from you know from blonde to brunette a diff a difference in the way that people dealt with you day to day? Um lots of people had an opinion about whether they like the blonde or the brunette. They kept saying, Well, no, I prefer the blonde or I prefer the brunette and um, and, and you wanted to say, Well, it's none of your business. Uh yeah, great feedback. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I've got this now, you know, it's, it's the, the blonde was a wig, so it was a convertible, you know, you put the roof down, take it off. And, and, and to me, it was, it was kind of part of my journey to be one person. And when you can mm -hmm. remove a significant part of your identity and put it on the lampshade at night or the rag, yeah. we call it, um, yeah. it, it, it gave people the choice of how I could, you know, they could dictate to me how I could present to them. 
we don't want to mm-hmm. see you with the hair. We want to see you without the hair. Now, this is one me. This is, this is the me you've got. And this is 24 by 7. If I get up feeling really rough in the morning and, the, and someone's at the front door, I just open the door, yeah, look a bit rough, <laughs> and, uh, and, and nip, and, and open the door, do what, if I need to nip across the road for a pint of milk. So this is the one person now. I can go swimming, I can shower, and, and, and everything in it. So, Funny. From a, uh, yeah, from a sense of self, yeah, it, it's, it's important to me as a person to have yeah. one me. Yeah, sorry, I was interrupting. No, no, no. That's perfect. I just laugh because I'm like, not me. If you come to my house, you might not know who I am. I'll be like, it's me, Jackie. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we, we've gotten halfway through. I'm going to ask some daft questions. Uh, Joe, I'll be the uh, First of all, uh, uh, can you tell me what does mansplaining mean? Well, this is where um, a person of the uh, the male species of, of human being decides that they need to try and enlighten a woman based on their perspective of life. And a practical example of that is, uh, which is quite ironic because having lived in the other role for many years, to have it mm. suddenly be, have something mansplained to me was like, wow, that's, do, do, do I, have I suddenly lost my brain overnight or something? So I was driving <laughs> down the M6 and I was on a, on, a, on, a, on a hands-free conversation on the phone with somebody and my tire pressure warning light came on. I went boing, like it does. And the person on the other phone said, oh, what's that noise? I said, oh, it's a tire pressure warning light. They said, oh, what you need to do is slow down to 50, pull over at the next service station, and they generally have places where you can pump your tires up. You might have to go to the counter and ask for a token. And if you need some help, <laughs> they can show you how to use it. I thought, oh. so suddenly I, I don't know how to pump my tires up anymore. It's like, it's like really incredible. I thought, Really? Oh, thank you so much. I've never been able to figure that out for myself. <laughs> so that was like I would imagine in, in, in all of the, all of the process of change in the past couple of years, your IQ or knowledge has not gone away. That stays exactly the same. Um, well, you say that it's a bit funny. I, I don't know if I'm playing the gender stereotype or playing the role, but I I do have you know in, in the past if I was parking the car, it had yeah. to be perfect. It had to be dead between the lines, dead parallel. And it'd be a real. Play. Now I kind of like reverse it and go, "Oh, sod it, that will do." <laughs> Just get out of and leave it. And I think I play. You know, I was playing the blonde. You know, so I, oh, something goes wrong. You know, frankly, the blonde you know, moment. Frankly, I don't feel embarrassed about not being perfect anymore because I think. And con- hey, confessing I'm, that I'm, you're a disgrace to womanhood. That's shocking. Yeah, I'm embracing it. And I think it kind of lets me feel less constrained by the rules of life. If you like, I don't have to get things right and be be that perfect on everything anymore. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, another question have you planned out what you would do in the event of a zombie apocalypse wait you see yeah I've, I've watched lots of movies and I think, <laughs> I think it's important to work out if you're one of the people that's going to live or one of the people yeah. that's going to die because if you're one of the people that's going to die anyway you might as well just get over and done with it and then have fun being a zombie but if you're going to yeah. live there's certain rules I mean don't do not do something silly like you board yourself up and then decide you need to go out for a pint of milk because no one's watching because they always get you. So if you're going to stay boarded up, stay boarded up. If you're going to find an underground shelter or something, but whatever you yeah. do, don't do the stupid thing. You know, so oh, zombies knocking on the door. Let's open the door. Oh, look, it's a zombie. Or they're going to come through the roof. They're going to knock the windows down. So you need to find yeah. something really robust, you know, um, or maybe get a really fast car with lots of petrol because as soon as you run out of petrol, you're going to stop at the gas station and they're going to get you. Yeah. So whatever, yeah. you, whatever you do that goes wrong, they're going to get you. So I'm saying it's, there are very few heroes that survive the attack, aren't there? Yeah. 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 You think of that type, was it was it Will Smith? He, he buried himself in this thing, they found the cure, and he ended up dying while they found the cure. Thing. Oh, that, yeah, so are you going to survive? If you're not going to survive, just get out there and be a great zombie and enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> my my son, number, number, number two son, Lucas, uh, a long time worked out that we, we live close to a, a large soccer stadium uh, where Scotland play. And uh, and he worked out that he could secure that really pretty well. So we all get into Hamden Stadium, secure yeah. all the gates and doors, and he knows the place inside out. So uh, uh, he knows where the, the pickaxes are, where the, uh, the the sledgehammers and the shovels and so on. So he's got it all sorted. I think everyone should have a plan. You've got to have a backup plan just in case. Yeah, but what happens is the zombie will bite somebody and you, they'll, they'll come in because you'll let them in and then they'll become the zombie inside the stadium. Then you're all dead anyway. So I think you just have to, you, you just no, have to get the hang of it. You know? 
back positions. So you can fall back yeah. to higher ground. That there's only ever two have people it. that survive the apocalypse, you know, in the movies. There's only ever two people left. That's right. And they're, they're always mm. in love. So unless you've got someone with you that you're in love with, you're going to die. It's, it's, it's kind of a, a zombie fact. And but, one of them's going to be a film star, obviously. Yeah, oh, yeah, so. obviously the star of the show, yeah. yeah. If you're wearing like Star Trek, isn't it? If you if you've got a red shirt in Star Trek, you're going to die. So you, you've got to have a kind of a blue shirt if you're going to live in Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. La- la- last half question before we get more serious. Uh, uh, Joanne, who are you wearing right now? Who am I? You know I they wearing? always ask on they always ask ah, on the red carpet. Who are you wearing, what? darling? Um, yeah, I'm modelling some Gokwan. Well, actually, Ooh. Sainsbury's Gokwan is a, is a designs for Sainsbury. I'm not sure Gokwan did. Design this specifically, but this is this is a Sainsbury's outfit and uh, Sainsbury's tights, and I've got, I've got some slippers on from uh, from a, a, a nice brand called Yours Clothing. Yeah. I had to let Dakota out. Sorry, Dakota was like not having it. She was like, "If you don't let me out, I'm gonna start barking." So I had to let her out. Jackie, where we're on the subject, who are you wearing right now? I am wearing hiring solved. <laughs> uh, I am a hunter. Oh, Ooh. I like that. That's cool. <laughs> I, I can do Christmas jumper though from next. Yes, I've got my polo on. Still got it. on. Yeah. My polo. That's, polo. That's my crimbo <laughs> jumper for, for the parties. I want to go over something. I just looked at. I was looking at your LinkedIn profile. So I had some questions about your background. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go for it. Let What's me the worst see? that can happen? <laughs> right. I mean, and it's funny how many times when I talk to people, they'll say, oh, I need to do this. I need to do this. But this is public. This is what we get to see, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, all the way back. You've got lots of yeah. stuff going on. Yep. Yeah. So let's go here. This is what I know that um, uh, Stephen was saying, it was talking about your IT background and yeah. it looks like you started that's way back in the day that's when you could spell it and get an it people didn't know yeah. what that was and Co- coots are the queen's bankers aren't they yes they are they're part of nat west rbs yeah that it was coots and co when i joined they rebranded to coots uh, yeah and then you went from there to a delivery manager for a year and then i guess you started your own business is that what that is yeah, P2 Networks. I, yeah, I left Coates in 98 and started my own, uh, uh, initially as a bit of a freelancer, but also then I, I started expanding as some some good uh, customers, a um, couple of cable TV companies. Yeah, I, I, did, I did all right. I, I got things moving quite well at that time, yeah. Look, you, think, look, you have, how did you get to be on so many boards? You're like in a million organizations and a million boards. As my wife would say, I don't say no enough uh, in the early days. You know, so I keep volunteering things. Oh, will you do that? Will you do that? You think, yes, yes, yes. And before you know it, you're do, doing too much and become sort of like you, you become overcommitted. So I, I was, I joined Round Table, which is a, a club for men, ironically, uh, back in the uh, '92, and I, mm. I somehow elevated myself to the position of the national president of uh, Great Britain and Ireland, which was uh, a very uh, quite an honour, quite an honour. Um, yeah, I, I represent. I often say that I, I was never a sports person, but I was able to represent my country at my chosen sport, and my chosen sport was round table. And I was able to go on the world stage and go to world meetings and attend world AGMs and speak on behalf of my country, if you like. It was quite an honour. So, so in all of that, what, what, one of the things that people have been saying about you speaking this year, Joe, is that your speaking style is really slick. Uh, it's not it's not overly polished, you know, and uh, and naff, but uh, you know, it, it, people people catch on and they're, yeah. they're drawn in. Uh, and obviously, you've done the Toastmaster mm-hmm. Master International thing, but mm-hmm. you've clearly been in for a long time. You know what you're doing when you're on the stage. Um, yes and no. I mean, through my role in Mount Table, it is it, you got I got involved with quite a lot of debating in a club level, yeah. and. Uh, the national president role and the area chairman role was one where you go around and visit other clubs and they, they you were kind of the warm up for the main speaker. So they book a yeah. comedian and I'd be there sort of doing the state of the nation, pinning badges on people and saying, what a great club you are. So I do, I do a lot of that. So I got quite mm-hmm. used to just racking up in a dinner jacket and a bow tie, sitting there yeah. next to the guest speaker, one side, the chairman, the other side, 
ask me a few questions, write a speech on my leg and stand up and deliver it to a, a bunch of people who'd had far too much to drink and try, to try and be interesting. So I was doing that about, about three or four times a week. Uh, I, I don't say I, I got good. really good at it. I was kind of okay yeah. at it. Um, so I knew mm-hmm. I could talk, but what I didn't know is could I stand up and talk in a dress? You know, it was quite a, quite a different thing from um, standing up and talking in my old life to saying, actually, can I do this? Can I, can I be taken seriously? Is my voice going to carry? Am I going to be nervous? That's my okay. Toastmasters. Yeah. You, you, what made you decide to go, you know, not everybody that has that is, uh, you know, transgender or has to go out and, and be the voice. What made you decide, because it's it's very brave to do those t- types of things, you know, because you're already, you're going into it knowing that there could be some criticism. What made you decide to do that and to share your lessons with so many people, not just in, in the UK, but all over the world? I've seen you on HR.com and different yeah. things in the States and all these speaking engagements. What made you decide to do that besides the fact that you're really good at it? Um, but what it was is I... I was running a business. I had two, uh, a couple of business partners. We had 20 staff. We're turning over 1.2, 1.3 million in the last year I was there. And I was going through the stage of my life where things had to change. I, I described it. I was going a bit moldy past my sell by day. I was, I've been in IT for 25, 30 years. I, I was getting kind of frustrated by the being responsible for everybody else's systems. And it, it was always about a problem. And I was, never in the, I was never in the solution side of IT, always in the problem side of IT. And it got very tiring. And my gender identity was becoming something that I couldn't control. It was something I had to, I had to follow. And I just couldn't face being myself at work with my staff, with my clients, with my employees. So I kind of bottled it in a way. I just kept it secret. And I think my performance, my, I wasn't a great person at the time. I, was, I had too much on my mind. I think my business partners got wind of it. Either they figured out I was trans or they just figured out that I was having a tough time. They just offered to buy me out. As part of that deal, I signed a non-compete. So I couldn't go back into IT in a, in a mm. sort of self-employed basis yeah. anywhere in the world. That was the, that was the deal I did without their permission. And I'd always had this passion to promote trans awareness because if I could change one person's life to have a better experience than I did, allow one person's family to believe that it's, it's okay. So my wife and mm. I were still together, be married, you know, 31 years, got the rings. And if, if we could just make someone believe that it's okay, you can do this. That was kind of yeah. my mission, really, just, just that one change. And I, I looked at cybersecurity, I looked at GDPR, I looked at all these things I could do, and I thought, God, this sounds so boring. And I wanted to see <laughs> someone speak at a local networking club. And someone, asked, someone else asked them the question, so how do you become a public speaker? How do, you, how do you do this? And they just flippantly said, just put it on your LinkedIn profile and go for it. I thought... Okay, that sounds, yeah. like, sounds like a good idea. It's just, well, Joe Andlock, keynote speaker. Let's see what happens. And it kind of... I kind think of uh, you can really it off with that. Just put it on your, on your profile and people will suddenly, they'll ask if you can come and speak at something. Yeah, and, and, and you, obviously you've you got, you got to shake it about a bit. You've got to start, I go through LinkedIn, look for events. I go on Eventbrite, look for events. I find the bookers, find the people and just email and say, do you want a speaker? If not now, how about the next one? And now yeah, I say, yeah. do you want a speaker? How much are you going to pay me? So it's, it's I've yeah. elevated from doing the doing the doing the free gigs up to the, a point where people actually want to book me because I've got something useful to say. I have to say, on 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 a personal note, so when you spoke at uh, Recx this year, you 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 blew the roof off. Uh, everyone loved it, and and I think shortly after that, you spoke at Recfest as well, uh, and yeah. uh, and you spoke really well, uh, but. Uh, the thing is, most people, uh, they either don't at all or very seldom to come across anyone who's transgender uh, just because they're in their own little cocoon and it doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah. It's, but it'll happen more frequently. It'll certainly happen if you're living in London and so on. So, you, you know, if you're seeing a high volume of people. And uh, 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 when you, whenever you meet someone from a, 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 who has a different life to you that's yeah. not yeah. the standard, you know, uh, people that you've met and, and known all your life, yeah. then all of the questions that you could ask, well, you can ask, but even if you just get to know the person, then you get to break down the barrier where, where you're, you're not suddenly thinking they're different to me. You're suddenly mm. thinking, I think they're very similar to me. Mm. You know, we, we know this, we know that, we like such and such. We've got, we've got all these things in common. Uh, so uh, for, for me, seeing you speak this year, and, and even from when we met at uh, the first True London, 
uh, it, it, every time we speak is something more that I'm learning or picking up or or just mm. fine tuning. And it's now it's now for me, I think, pretty comfortable. But the more people that see you and get to know you, and hopefully, you know, through seeing mm. this, uh, then it'll it, it'll be less of a thing in their mind. Uh, to the point at which they yeah. say, "Yeah, that's totally normal. It's it's it's, it's, it's an everyday occurrence." I, I agree. I, and you know, you look at biases. Affinity bias is very strong. Mm. And if you don't know people who are different to you, you're going to bias against them. So, I think it's everybody's responsibility to meet people who aren't like them more and more and more. Yeah. Pushing up into the zone. You've never met somebody with this type of disability. You've never met someone from this background. You've never met someone with this learning style. Meet them. Yeah. Find out. I, I don't, I'm not saying interrogate people. I'm not saying treat them like a library book and flip through their pages. But just yeah. be their friend, be their ally. And mm -hmm. when you meet other people, you go, well, it's just a person. We're all a skeleton with bones underneath, you know. Yeah. Um, and just get to know the people. And, but if, if I'm visible, if other people are visible, whether it's whether you're trans, LGBT, BME, whatever your background is, if you only see people like you in your business, in your social life, you're, you're always going to struggle when people are slightly different or, or a different perspective than you. So just get out mm -hmm. there. Just, just, just yeah. get in the world, you know, travel. I want to close it out with the last question. We're about to be out of time, but I have one last thing that I want to ask. Yeah. Okay. If God does exist, what do you want to hear St. Peter say when you cross the pearly gates? If God did exist, um, how about I was right all along? <laughs> 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 um, I'm, a, I'm not a non-believer. I just don't believe, if that makes sense. Um, I, I, I have a, a very matrix view of the world. I think sometimes we're living in our own... Uh, the reality is based on my sense of perception. So I, I think, you know, the fact that you're here, we're having this conversation is because I say so. And I've got no <laughs> reference to it outside of my own head. So I, I quite like a, a matrix model. Uh, so if there is a God and there is a St. Peter and there is an afterlife, I'll go, fair cop, I was wrong. <laughs> Probably. Excellent. I, I have a couple of questions. First of all, can I ask your, uh, your echo a question? Uh, Alexa, who put the ram in the ram a ding dong I'm not sure. Oh, come oh, on. Sure. Right, I'm, I'm going to try something else. Alexa, why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me. They long to be close to you. <laughs> Very good. And now, as, as we're at the end, there's a, there's a question we always ask at the end. Uh, so the show is called Pink Slips and P45s in America. If you get fired, you get your pink slips. In the UK, it's a yeah. P45. Uh, when was the last time you were fired and did you deserve it? I've been fired twice in my life. And the second time was a quick, was a more of a resignation stroke exit. But the first mm -hmm. time I was fired was uh, when I left school, I joined the RAF. Um, yeah. And I was an, a, an electronics apprentice. And this is, this is going back lots of years, so don't judge me. And <laughs> I think you're exactly the same age as me, aren't you? Uh, say again? You're the exact same age as me, going by your, your Twitter handle. Um, I'm 53, 54 in January, so, yeah. Yeah, it's so the same year as you, yeah. Huh? Yeah, so, yeah, back back in the day, so back when I was, I think I was 17 and a half, 18, um, yeah. my cigarettes became a bit too Amsterdam, for those who are European. So, um, and <laughs> when you're in the armed forces, they, they took a very yeah. dim view on smelly fags. Uh, yeah. So they you still they talking asked about me to leave you? via the back door, and so that was the. I learned a very big lesson at the age of seventeen and a half, eighteen. To uh, uh, well, I don't know why I learned. I, I, I learned that life can only get better sometimes. Whenever you think the world's against you, you deal with yeah. it, take your medicine, dust yourself off, and go, have another go at something else. So yeah, there's been a few other instances over the years. I think I don't think I've ever been undeservedly. Um, let go. I think I've probably generally deserved it. But again, they're all dusting down opportunities to think, right, I've learned from that. Let's move on. Let's try something different. Fantastic. So, so reinvention has been in there from, uh, for, for, for decades. Oh, sorry, I missed that again. Sorry. I'm saying reinvention has been part of your makeup for decades in that case. 
I suppose, yeah, you could look at it that way. Yeah, I used to think every year that ended in a four always had some sort of disaster that sort of like spurred me on. But uh, yeah. 1994, yeah, no, yeah, no, 84, 94. I think I'm, I skipped 2004. <laughs> but no, I, 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 I had, uh, I mean, I've had a couple of customers uh, mm. fire me, which were quite significant, you know, when I was doing some IT, yeah. selling some IT. Uh, and I had a couple of customers go bust on me, which caused some uh, learning to, to occur, um, especially when they owe £100,000, and that kind of makes, you, makes your business uh, rock a bit. And uh, So, yeah, I've That's had some challenges. I've had some major curveballs and, and dips in the road that I've had to cope with, yeah. Yep. But you're on, you're, you're on and up now. You've had a good year, and hopefully a much better year next year. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking to uh, dust my passport off and... and, and Go, come and meet people. Come and talk. And yeah, I'd love, to, I'd love to get more bookings and, and get out there. Add, add. Fantastic. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're a bit over time. Uh, uh, Jackie, uh, do you want to uh, do you want to finish up? Uh, can you can you tell us who we're going to have on next week? We were hoping to have a certain Mister Jim Stroud. That's the man. Everything should work out. Jim Stroud's going to come. Longtime friend here, and then. We're going to be going across the pond each time so that we can kind yeah. of share that experience with the people that we meet. So I don't We're know. We're getting the air miles. That's what it is. Huh? We're getting the air miles as we go. We're getting the I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Stroud is fabulous. Jim is an absolute rock star. And I'll tell you what, like if we had to choose, you know, to hire you on, I would hire you. I think I'm going to reach out to you. I have a lot of things. I just, I just like you. And I saw, of course, I feel like I know you better probably than you know me because I looked yeah. at your background and looked at your videos. But I, I really would like to get to know you better. Maybe I'll no, get to see I'd you. I'd love to. Like Barcelona. Just, and, if I, look, I've got, let's, let's, let's have some Prosecco. Let's have, let's, <laughs> let's, let's have a Christmas drink now. Yeah. I did say the other day that we need to crack open our champagne at the end of the call and, and go ching I ching. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's I'm gonna. I'm, I'm stuck with this stupid glass of water. I'm stuck with just an empty cup. But cheers! Oh, come on. Well, cheers, cheers, everyone. This is the best. Um, yeah, just for second fruit. Yes, let's do it. Yeah. See everyone oh next God. week. Thanks very much for joining us. Yeah. Oh, Jackie, do you, do you want to do that? You can do the close off at the end. Oh well, I was just saying that she's hired. I think she's hired. She's a great hired. co-host. I guess absolutely can... hired. You're hired. Yeah. Start Monday. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thanks, everyone, who, who joined watching. And uh, I'll see you soon, Joe. Yeah, Thanks, you Joanne. Thanks, Jackie. Have a Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Adios. Thanks. Bye-bye.